So the release of the Intel 12th Gen CPU is just around the corner and before we take a look into the CPU, we have the Z690 motherboard with us today and what we have here today is actually the Maximus Z690 Hero from ROG and it is one of the Z690 motherboards that will be coming into the Malaysian market very soon. Now, although we can't really talk about the performance and benchmark at the moment, but we'll still take a look at what kind of features and accessories we can expect from the Z690 Hero from ASUS ROG. First of all, this is a media kit from ASUS and do mind that this will not be the thing you will be getting when it's in the market. Starting off with the packaging itself, yes, this is a media kit and you get all the aesthetics you need because for the content itself, photo shoot and everything. So let's take a look at what's actually inside this thing. So yes, upon lifting the cover you see the motherboard so inside here we can see the motherboard box of course and also what appears to be i don't know wedding invitation letter or something oh oh okay this is actually very similar to what you can see from some of the previous ROG Strix graphics card which actually has the coordinate which is supposed to point to the location of the ASUS HQ in Taiwan. And for the main focus of today's video is of course the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero. One thing I noticed right after opening the box is that we actually didn't see the usual naming for the ASUS ROG motherboards because instead of continuing the generation number like previous gen we have maximus 13 hero maximus 12 hero but for this generation you're actually getting a maximus z690 instead of 14. so not sure what's going on there maybe asus has a new plan for the naming but we'll leave that to asus to clarify so aside from the new naming for the motherboard itself you can actually see there is other highlights on the box which is it's ready for Windows 11 support for Wi-Fi 6E, DDR5, new LGA 1700 socket PCIe 5.0 which is a sudden big leap we can see from the previous PCIe 4.0 which just exists in the market for like less than 5 years so of course, the first thing you will see after unboxing this is the motherboard itself and you will have some other accessories that comes together with the motherboard at the bottom compartment which is first, a PCIe expansion card for your SSD so this is supposed to be an expansion card for you to take advantage of PCIe 5.0 but as of now we don't really have that kind of SSD in the market yet for the consumers so you might have to wait for quite a while until they actually have one for the consumer market okay, that aside you also get some what is this oh, something like a welcome note for you because you bought an ROG product the manual which most people will not even read until they face some issues and of course you know, the sticker you can stick on your PC case or your laptop or wherever you want and of course the accessories inside you will find four SATA cables an ROG keychain for you to put on your keys to show people that hey I own ROG products some screws, Q latch RGB extension cables a GPU holder 
which can be really useful for those of you who are using their ROG Strix 3080 those big size heavy cards which will sag if you don't use any kind of support for it and of course this is something that I've been waiting for a very long time since ASUS decided to change their wireless antenna to non-magnetic I've been pretty upset about it and finally this time it's back and it's magnetic so why am I so excited for this is because first you don't have to assemble the part already and it's not magnetic but for this one it's very simple it's just easy open up fold it back and with a magnetic base you can just stick it on your case or any metal parts around your desk so that's very convenient so at first glance we can actually see that they have a rather interesting design for this generation I don't know what kind of design you call this but something like a pixel art which looks decent to some I think it's somewhere in the middle to me I still can accept this kind of design but the most interesting part is actually this it's not a digital display but more like a double layer graphics inside and it will interchange and cycle throughout the RGB cycle which is a very interesting design instead of having a big OLED or LCD panel placed here so for the connectors first you will get quite a lot of fan headers around the motherboard it's actually very decent when it comes to cable management because all the fan headers are actually placed at only the top and the bottom of the board itself let's take a look at the power connectors so for the CPU the EPS part you get two 8 pin EPS to deliver power to your CPU because the hero motherboard we have here actually comes with a 10 phase design which made out of 20 90 amp power stage in a team configuration like what we have in the previous Asus ROG motherboards so it can be a really powerful combination for the upcoming 12th gen Intel CPUs and because this is technically an ROG motherboard for the enthusiasts for those of you who likes to play around with testing like we do they have the usual Q code onboard power button flex key which by default acts as your reset key and a retry button right here it doesn't have the safe boot button which I hope it has but it will still be sufficient enough because if you have any issues it will cycle through all the retries and if it fails it will just bring you back to the default bio screen and you can just configure everything and if that doesn't work you will still get a reset button at the back panel right here so it's very useful for people who likes to play around with the tweakings and overclockings and because the 12th gen Intel CPU now supports DDR5 of course the Z690 motherboard will have DDI5 support as well though there are other Z690 motherboards that supports DDR4 which kind of acts as a transition model for those who still prefer to you know stick with DDR4 or they can't get DDR4 during this time that will be a considerable options I guess but if you manage to get a Z690 motherboard that supports DDR5 and you can get the DRAM modules just go for that because that's how you get the best out of the latest 12th gen Intel CPUs and of course the Z690 motherboards and of course because this is a new socket this time the LGA 1700 the socket is totally different than the previous gen motherboards which means that this will not be able to fit the previous gen 10th gen 11th gen Intel CPUs although they did change the socket this time but because of these holes right here on the board as you can see your current powerful coolers which you are using will still be able to 
fit right on the Z690 motherboard which has this kind of design for the coolers. Okay, now moving on to a rather interesting feature this time. If you notice the heatsink they provide for the M.2 SSDs, it's actually very big, tall, thick, to a point that after you install a graphics card, it's almost impossible to put your fingers right in between the gap just to push on the latch to release your GPU. So in this generation, Asus solved that problem by including this, the button that actually has a metal wire that connects to the latch which can be used to release the latch without having to go through the trouble finding anything to push it because of the narrow gap. So this solved the problem once and for all. Thank you Asus. The Z690 Hero here still have a total of 3 Yes, they have a total of 3 M.2 slots on the motherboard. One at the top and two at the bottom. As for those of you who likes RGB, so you have one ARGB headers right above this cluster, which is somewhere near the Q-code display, and three more under the last PCIe slot. And for those of you who really want to get the most out of the CPU by overclocking and has everything ready for your extreme water cooling system, there's a special cluster right at the bottom right of the motherboard right here which is for all your water cooling needs the, the pump header the flow and everything is right here so very well thought as well okay. and finally let's move on to the rear io so this time we can see that although there are still quite a few empty slots here which i really hope that we'll really utilize it for more usb ports but you still get quite a lot of USB ports on the Z690 Hero as well. Especially this part, you get three USB-C connectors which has Thunderbolt 4 support as well. USB 3.2, a port dedicated for BIOS flashback which is very well labeled here. And your usual ports, maybe you can use it for your peripherals. As for the internet connectivity, you get a 2.5G Ethernet port right here as well as Wi-Fi 6E and last but not least, a HDMI port right here in case, I don't know, some of you might want to give the Intel IGP a try. So I guess that's pretty much it we can talk about on the Maximus C690 Hero at the moment. So to wrap up our first impression unboxing of the ROG Maximus C690 Hero right here today, well, I would say this is actually a pretty decent looking board with quite a number of interesting features, especially the Q Lash release button right here. So if you're interested to know more about the review benchmark numbers, the review for this motherboard is coming very soon because we are still doing quite a number of benchmarks on the board and do let us know what you think about the motherboard your first impression of the Maximus Z690 Hero right here and I guess I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye